Hey guys, that Welsh nerd here, and today we're going to be doing an in-depth video um, on the Armager Warglaives, otherwise affectionately known as Baby Knights. Now, what are Armager Warglaives? Uh, they were a new unit introduced in the Forgebane unboxing. Uh, Forgebane box, even not unboxing. Um, and basically, they're smaller knights piloted by lesser nobles in the house, so perhaps like a second son or a distant cousin who's not a true noble, but um, is higher than the common rabble and men of arms, etc. So, first things first, we're just going to take a quick look at the model. And my oh my, has GW outdone themselves. These things look incredible. They've really kept the aesthetic of Standard Knights. Unfortunately, I don't have mine to hand to show you. Um, but they've kept the poseable arms, etc. The heads are poseable, but I've decided to glue it in place just for firmer hold. Um, the top weapon is itself removable. It's just got a little pinhole there you can put it in. Um, importantly, there's no profile that doesn't take one of these, so you're always going to have so it doesn't matter about the hull. Um, on the sprues you also get the parts to build both the weapons and none of them use parts that are in both of them. So I would recommend build them both and just swap as needed. Um, but yeah, it's really crisp detail. No faults when I was building it to be honest. Um, in the model itself anyway, there was no missing parts. Um, However, one thing I did notice was there was a lot of mislabeling in the instruction booklet, like the chain glaives were listed as like parts 54 and 55, um, whereas on the spur they're like 9 and 10. So I think that's the proof we've got that more weapon options are going to be coming for these guys. And then just the second one, just because he's in a different pose and it's got a different head on. Um, yeah, I really do like these models. They went together surprisingly quickly once I started got going. Um, they took all in all about an hour and a half to build the pair of them. The first one taking about whoops, first one taking about fifty minutes, whereas the next one took about forty once I got into the flow of things and tidied up the parts. Um, there's no obvious gap filling I can see. Um, but yeah, these are great little kits. I'm looking forward to the full retail for them. The weapons look good. The chain, uh, the I think they're called chain leaves. I yeah, chain cleaver. That's the one. Um, I like their double-edged row of teeth. They feel brutal. But yeah, that's really it on the model aspect. They're a good model. Um, another thing you can probably already tell is the arms are completely reversible. Unlike the um, standard knights, which have, uh, whilst they're reversible, they do have more detail on one side than the other. Whereas these guys, it's more or less equal. The chain glaives, sorry, chain gleavers, um, have got slightly different detailing, like there's vents on one side, but nothing that can't be solved. Uh, well, nothing that look, doesn't look bad on a tabletop. Um, yeah, again, just this melt again is loose. Um, oh, and the other thing is the legs are also switchable. Um, you can see I've got this one with the left leg posed forward, this one with the right, or vice versa because I'm looking at them the wrong way around. Um, and that's all because it's very similar to the Retributor one. Um, they have a little cross pin there, and that is on both sides of the leg. Uh, as in, it's also on the bits around the hip, and the connection point is also in the cross pattern, so you can swap the legs around, and in fact, in the instruction booklet, when you're building them, um, I'm trying to think which one I built backwards, um, it says to put the legs on on this order, and then all the other instruction parts are on this side, like you built them, say, um, A and B, and it will tell you part 1A, part 1B, but then all the other instructions will actually be on this part, which is a little bit funny, um, but don't worry about it, there's nothing wrong with them. Really, my only major issue was attaching the feet, and just because I was a bit dumb doing it, I wasn't really sure which way around the feet go, this is the right way around. Basically, you want the f front toe, oh well, front toe, is going to be the only one facing forward, you don't want to have 
that in the front. And the other way to tell is the front of the foot has got slightly higher um, point there, whereas that's relatively flush with the foot. At the front, it's it goes up so the armor plate can be attached to it. Um, Scale-wise, uh, like I said, I don't really have an Imperial Knight to show off, so instead here is a Skitari Alpha, um, or a Primaris Marine, or even a Custodian. Um, yeah, so as you can see, they're relatively large. They're about the size of a Retributor. Again, I don't have it to hand at the moment, just because of living arrangements. Um, being a student, all that jazz left a lot of my models at home. Um, yeah, it's relatively large. Um, if I put uh, the Kyanite there, you can see, to give you a better scale, you'll know that's about the size of Imperial Knight, closer to a Serastus, and they get to about each other's waist. Um, but yeah, cool little sculpt. Now, um, one user, I think is trying to remember his name, I did have it written down, uh, that's it, Brendan Stanley, um, asked for a bit more in-depth rather than just the model review, so okay, I'm happy to do that. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to talk about points, just because Games Workshop can get a bit funny about it. Um, let's just adjust the camera here, just so you can see the actual rules profile though. Um, bear with. Just going to zoom this in, just so you can get a proper look at it. Okay, so the Armager Warglaive. It is a power level 12. Um, it has movement star, weapon skill star, ballistic skill star, strength 6, toughness 7, 12 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 8, and a 3 plus. Armor save with a sliding skill, as you can see here, going from 14 to 10 to 7 on the move for 3, 4, 5, and then 3, 4, 5 for weapon skill and ballistic skill. Now, this unit can t it comes as a base as one armager. And you can include an additional armager for plus 12 power rating or uh, up to two more. So basically you can get a squadron of three warglaives. Um, and each is equipped with a reaper chain cleaver, a thermal spear and a heavy stubber. Um, again, I think this is going to change. Uh, right now it's just these weapon options. I think they're going to get some things like onslaught gatling cannons. Maybe the similar to the plasma gun. And perhaps a double close combat layered. So they'll kind of reflect um, different Imperial Knights. So you could imagine them as being squires instead, if that's how you wanted to build them. Um, with their following round their parent knight, if you want to call it that. Um, with a similar loadout supporting them. Um, so the Heavy Stubber, we all know and love it. Same as the Melt Again, it's a t the, you're choosing range over armor cracking. Um, and AP. Okay, so first big meaty weapon is the Thermal Spear. Now this is an Assault D3 as opposed to D6 on the big one. Um, it's Strength 8, AP minus 4 and does D6 damage. It's basically a souped up melting gun. Um, if the target is within half range of this weapon, roll 2 dice when inflicting damage with it. Um, and discard the lowest result. Importantly, remember this doesn't save vehicle. Um, so if you're within half range, you roll two dice. Sorted. Um, so war gear options, you just swap the heavy stuff with the melt gun. I would highly recommend that. These guys, you don't really want them to deal with infantry. That's what the rest of your force is for. These guys are going to be premier um, armor crackers. And then a re reaper chain cleaver is melee weapon. It's strength times two, so it's a strength 12 weapon. Um, letting you damage most vehicles in the game on a free. Including other knights. Um, yeah, not bad. Uh, lighter vehicles you'll be able to get. Um, uh, well, light. Uh, I can't think of any toughness 6 vehicles off the top of my head. But things like um, the aggressors, etc. You'll be damaging on 2s. If you want to get into close combat with them. Um, yeah, and it does a flat free damage as well. So again, these crack... Armor, we've got the Ion Shield, which model have a 5 plus invulnerable against shooting attacks. Uh, and then the Vehicle Squadron, which is basically um, 
the same as Lehman Rust has got in the Imperial, uh, sorry, the Imperial Guard or Astra Militarum Codex. And basically, once they, when you put them down, they've got to be within six inches of each other if you take them as one unit. Um, but from then on, they count as individual units. It would reduce the zero wounds, you will die from movement from a table on six, it explodes in each unit within six inches, suffers D3. Keywords, we've got the Quest or Allegiant and Household. Basically, you're deciding if it's a free blade, Mars, or sorry, Mechanicum, or Imperium, and then the household name. Um, I think we're going to get rules for both of these, to be honest. Perhaps something along the lines of free blades will get just a bonus um, flat out, whereas Imperium will let you keep your detachment, same as Mechanicum. That's what I think, um, personally. Um, whereas the household then I, is going to give you individual buffs like we're seeing with more or less every faction in the game so far. Um, so, what do I think about these guys after looking at the rules? This is the first impression rules, I haven't used them in game. Um, basically, they do what they say on the tin. They're mini knights. Um, they do what knights do, but one less, but cheaper. Um, importantly, um, whilst I said I wouldn't discuss points just because of how funny Games Workshop can be about it online. Um, you do only pay for the knight and the carapace weapon, the thermal spear and the chain cleaver. Oh, one day I'll get this right. Um, are free. Uh, they cost zero points. Um, yeah. Uh, they're cheaper than you'd think, but I currently think they're slightly overcosted. Um, but, eh. What can you do? Um, I think they're going to get a rebalance in the new Knight Codex that's been announced. Definitely. So, using these in game, I would always take the Melter Gun over the Heavy Stubber if you're running the Film Spear. If this turns out to be the only weapon loadout, and I'd be surprised if it was, I would always take the Melter Gun. You want these guys to crack vehicles. They are brilliant at cracking vehicles and heavy armoured targets. Thermal Spear is nasty, as is the Melt Again. Um, you can reliably kill a vehicle in one round, I'd say. Um, even if you have to charge it in close combat, if it's got four attacks, on twelve strength 12, AP of minus 3, and doing 3 damage per hit, you're going to put a good crack into a vehicle. So yeah, these guys are your armor hunters. Um, uh, on... Using them with other knights, I'd say you want to treat them as basically like release the hounds. You want your main knights to stand back and just blow the hell out of your opposing force. Um, whereas these guys are going to be ranging up, um, engaging light vehicles, engaging vehicles, um, steering away from close combat. You want things with your Gatling cannons and black... Uh, have more shots to deal with them. These guys want to avoid infantry like the plague, unless of course they get their onslaught Gatling cannon, which I'm really hoping they do, or an equivalent to it. Um, just because it would make sense, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, there's nothing wrong with these rules at all. I think they're a good, solid unit. I don't know if Lord of War classification is right. Perhaps it's just to keep it consistent with knights. Perhaps knights will have their own special detachment bonus in it, like we've just seen released yesterday actually, um, to give you an idea of when this was filmed, um, the Drakari, well Dark Alda, have are getting a bonus for taking multiple patrol detachments, so perhaps Imperial Knights are going to get something similar, they'll get multiple, they'll get more command points if they run multiple Lord of War slots. That's the only reason I can see them doing that, other than being able to include them in other forces. Um, these feel more like a heavy support, they're more equivalent to an Onagar than, um, or a Retributor, rather than a Lord of War. But, again, I think that's more just an internal balancing and future-proofing. Um, we'll see more of that once the Knight Codex drops. Now, one last thing that, um, I was, that Brendan asked was my household colour scheme and actually I haven't picked one yet. I've got some lore for a custom house I'm, I've built in the past um, which fits in with my Primaris forces and stuff. Well, kind of. Um, they were made about the same time. If you'd like me to do a video on that, drop a comment down below. Um, I'll probably do just like a future lore 
video or when I eventually move on to streaming. I'll just, just discuss it there with people who are watching. Um, and I'll probably go more in detail about it once the Night Codex comes out, unless, of course, people really want this video. Um, uh, but yeah, the colour scheme I haven't quite decided, so perhaps if you do want that video, I can break down their background and you guys could suggest a colour scheme for it. Um, but yeah, that has been the Armager Warglaves. Highly recommend. Once they get their own box, I'm definitely going to be picking one up, so keep an eye out for that review. Um, but yeah, no complaints. Next video this week is going to be the Cryptarch, and that will be it for the Forge Bane stuff, and then we'll be going back to our standard stuff. I know I've still got a Custodian to unbox and a in-depth codex review to edit that has been filmed finally. Um, but yeah, I think you guys will enjoy those videos. But before I go any further off on this tangent, I'm going to end the video. Whoops. That would have been a really good place to end. Um, be careful with tripods, guys. Um, but yeah, this has been Matt Welsh Nerd. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next one.